I am Axel Thompson from Sears Logic in Austin, Texas. I will talk today about hybrid power converters. What are hybrid power converters? They combine inductors and capacitors uh, in order to overcome the limits of um, inductive or capacitive uh, power converters. Those are well known. Each has their pros and cons. And in this talk, I will present some examples of hybrid power converters that advance the state of the art by using capacitors to solve the problems of inductive converters in the first two examples, or using inductors to solve the problems of switch capacitor circuits in examples three and four. Let's first talk about inductive power converters. They are most common for high efficiency converters. They offer easy regulation. They generally offer consistent high efficiency over a wide conversion range. Except maybe of the example of the buck boost converter, which I will talk about uh, in the next couple of pages. They tend to be bulky. They have lower power density than capacitors and not very suitable for integration. And uh, they offer discontinuous current flow on input or output. And those are problems that uh, we would like to address. So let me talk a little bit more about an ac uh, application example of a buck boost converter. Let's imagine we have a lithium ion battery uh, and we need to generate a 3.3 volt supply. And we can see in this graph that over the lifetime of the battery, we first have to buck the voltage to get down to 3.3 volt, but towards the end we have to boost the voltage up um, to maintain 3.3 volt. Now the traditional uh, conventional solution is shown on the right and um, we sh can see that it the current path here always involves two switches, and uh, we will, in the buck mode, uh, have a discontinuous current flow on the input, in the boost mode, discontinuous current flow at the output. Adding passenger could help. So the first example of a, a hybrid power converter is a classic from 1977, the Chuk converter. Uh, you can see here that it only involves two switches, um, and it adds a capacitor um, in the middle between these two inductors. How does it really work? Well, it's really a capacitively coupled combination of a boost and a buck converter. Um, you can see over on the right here a, um, a boost converter where phase one uh, builds up a current in the inductor, and then in phase two, this current gets uh, directed into this capacitor to, uh, to uh, build up a high voltage. And then a buck converter on the right, which uh, do recycles between the voltage on the cap capacitor and the, uh, the ground, uh, just like a traditional buck converter would. And um, that way it offers a inverting buck boost function, and it only places uh, one switch in the current path of the uh, uh, for every mode, and it provides a continuous uh, current flow on the input and the output. Now, a uh, more recent design of a hybrid uh, converter to address the buck boost problem uh, uses a flying capacitor. Uh, this example is from uh, 2017. Um, what we can see here is in this uh, proposed hybrid uh, buck boost converter, the switches S1 and S2 in the inductor together form a standard uh, uh, buck converter, again with only one switch in the current path. And uh, we add the uh, capacitor and some additional switches to, uh, to create the, the uh, boost function. I will explain how that works in the following slide. So let's first take a look at the uh, uh, what's, what's labeled as phase one here, and we'll look at the, the green current path. In phase uh, two, we uh, charge up the uh, capacitor CB to the voltage V in. When we go to phase two, uh, to phase one here on the lower side, we move the uh, right side connection of the capacitor to V out, and therefore we boost the voltage VX1 over on the left to um, V in plus V out, and that gives an opportunity for the inductor current AL to build up. 
Now we go back to the upper uh, phase and uh, the inductor gets connected uh, to the load and delivers the load, um, delivers current into the load and can boost the voltage V out to be larger than V in. And also in this uh, boost mode, we have only one um, switch in the current path and therefore we have the improved efficiency that this offers or the reduced size. Now let's switch gears. We'll talk about capacitive power converters and their advantages and disadvantages. Capacitive power converters have high power density. They are suitable for integration at low power levels. So those are the great advantages. But uh, they can only do fixed ratios with high efficiency. The R out times I losses are part of the regulation and therefore it's very hard to, to get very high efficiency. And uh, high output impedance and, uh, and ratio switching uh, makes for fairly difficult control. Just imagine you wanted to regulate near the uh, efficiency, uh, near the ratio of 0.33 here we were a little bit larger than uh, 0.33, we'd have to operate in this one-half mode and have quite a bit of uh, uh, RI drop and uh, fairly low achievable efficiency. And then if we wanted to get the maximum efficiency out of it, we'd have to do ratio switching between this one-third and one-half one mode. That's not very elegant, That's, that makes for difficult control algorithms, so Let's see how an inductor can help to overcome these problems. In this work from ISACC uh, 2017, um, we place an inductor in series with the load. Well, what does that do? Well, typically a switch capacitor converter has charge redistribution as we connect the uh, flying capacitor between the input and, uh, and the output. We, we get instantaneous charge redistribution, um, these kinds of uh, peaky current flows and uh, charge redistribution losses. Well, in this design, an inductor was placed in series with the, uh, with the load, and therefore, instead of having a voltage load, we have a current load. So this capacitor, this flying capacitor, does not get discharged instantaneously. It gets discharged by a constant current and the presence of the inductor allows us to have a lossless voltage drop between the, uh, the uh, voltage here on the left and the output voltage on the right. Therefore, um, we have the ability to do regulation. The more detailed circuit implementation shows a uh, one to four, uh, one fourth uh, uh, VN uh, Dixon charge pump and um, we see over here, it's basically a conventional design of a Dixon charge pump uh, down converter. But then we have our inductor load on the output and uh, with the help of the inductive load and the switches on M1, 2, M3, M4, we can achieve additional regulation. When we look on the right, we see that this works well for a wide range of uh, output currents and a wide range of output voltages. We get smooth regulation curves. We don't have to switch conversion ratios and we can have lossless voltage drop across the inductor to get efficient regulation. A fourth example is, uh, was presented at ISACC 2015. It's called the resonance switch capacitor circuit. Um, if we just look at one slice of this uh, converter, we can see a conventional switch capacitor circuit here, but we place an inductor in series with this uh, capacitor. Now the fact that we have uh, three of these in parallel is simply a uh, method to reduce the uh, ripple, um, but uh, let's now talk about how this inductor can help um, bring regulation to the switch capacitor circuit. So here we see um, the four clock phases possible with um, uh, this kind of circuit. Phase B 
and phase D are your conventional switch capacitor uh, circuits. We, we bring uh, the uh, flying capacitor between V in and V out, and then between V out and ground. But when we have the inductor present, we can add one of two other phases um, to the mix. Here we connect the switch capacitor to V in and ground, which helps increase the voltage on the capacitor, um, depending on the time you spend in this phase. We uh, look at phase C, we basically short out this capacitor, which means we reduce the voltage um, on this flying capacitor. Uh, and uh, with this uh, adding phases A or C, we can add regulation to the system. See, we can see here, for example, that in the boost mode, we um, have the sequence B, D, and A, where B and D are our traditional uh, switching phases, and A is the boosting phase that uh, increases the voltage on the capacitor um, before we put it to the output. Now in the buck mode, we uh, insert C um, in the sequence. By uh, inserting C, we reduce the voltage on the capacitor and we get some regulation. Now the results are shown here. We have um, in the top graph the uh, efficiency of our various currents. And it looks very smooth. It shows that we don't have high output impedance issues anymore with the help of these uh, inductors. And in the bottom, we see that uh, the regulation uh, also works. So we, we have some examples for bucking, where we take a 5 volt down to 1.8 volt, or a 3.7 volt to 1.2 volt, or boosting, where we take a 3.7 volt to, to 2.5 volt for example. In all of these examples, we don't get any of these efficiency dips that are typically for, uh, seen in the switch capacitor converters. We, we get the regulation that is just as smooth as for a inductive converter. So let me conclude my talk that the idea of hybrid power converters is actually pretty old, but uh, it is currently in a hot active research area in order to make switch capacitor circuits more flexible, to improve efficiency, to improve form factors, and enable higher levels of integration. Uh, papers in ISSCC 2018 add to the state of the art in hybrid converters and are shown in the references. So if you want to do further reading on these designs, the references are shown here. And if you have any further questions regarding this material, you can uh, my contact information is shown on the first slide. Thank you very much for listening.